Hi there, uh, it's Luther here from ExplainR and I'm in the ExplainR Swing Studio with my good friend and colleague Nick Wright and we're looking at a winter programme of improvement. So Nick, you've got a, a clean sheet, you, you, you've got as much time as you need, what would you like to work on this winter and what can I help you with? Well I'd like to get my teeth into a, a, a good bit of a practice programme over the next two or three months. You know, I rarely ever work on my game constructively. So it'd be nice to kind of you know, have a project that I can really sort of dive into. And so for me, I'm pretty happy with my driving. I tend to hit a lot of fairways and yeah. I'm pretty accurate and decent length. But I found that my iron play has always been a little bit inconsistent. It's a little bit weak. I tend to back off and steer shot. So if I can find a way of adding some extra power, a bit of oomph to my iron game, then that would be a really good project for me to have a go at. Okay, well, that's something to get our teeth into. And uh, as you said, Nick, it's going to take a little bit of time, like a diet or getting fit. It doesn't happen overnight. You'll see some short-term improvement, but if over the winter we get hitting the ball further, and what you might be surprised to learn is that if I get Nick hit it further, his grouping will improve. It won't go the other way. A lot of people think that the harder you hit it, the wider it goes. It's not true. I know from the last 10 years using the GC2 simulator, I know that your most powerful shots are also your most accurate, and that's totally counterintuitive. So Nick, we need a starting point. So uh, how far do you reckon you hit your six iron through the air? Normally. It's around about between sort of 158 and 165. Yeah, well, I've seen you hit the driver, and the irons relatively don't go as far as you drive. No, no, exactly. Yeah, it's okay. a little bit of an anomaly. Well, I think that's because with the driver, you've got a big wide fairway, and you're going for distance. And possibly when you've got an iron in your hand, you're sort of more caged, you're trying to be more accurate. Yeah, I'm a bit know? fearful with irons. Fearful. Okay, yeah. well, let's, uh, let, let's get a, a benchmark starting. I want you to hit me just a little batch of uh, six irons, full sure. swing, and let's see what sort of uh, distance through the air you get the ball to carry. Very good. It's better than I thought. Yeah. So you carried the 162, Nick. So again, just, it, yep. it's a new mindset. We don't mind you hitting bad shots, but we're not going to hit weak bad shots anymore. So commit okay. the shot, load, load and release fully. Very good. So we've got a pattern there. We've got your nice draw spin shape. It's going a little bit low, isn't it? So a little bit low, yeah. It lands. So one of the things that will change is the ball will go higher uh, as this sort of session progresses. Not in the first batch, but certainly in the second. Very good. I certainly don't hit them this far outside in, on, yeah, well, on, you're nice on real and, golf courses. That's right. you aren't, it's nice and warm, optimum conditions, everything's dry and warm, the balls and the clubs and everything's shafting yourself. And I can't, you lose, I can't lose the ball. That's it. Okay, well, we'd, we'd say that was your optimum shot. That's gone the further through the air. And again, the classic example, fifth shot, longest shot that Nick hit right on the target line. So, Nick, that's excellent. That's a, that's a great starting point. And if we look at the, uh, the stats, the distance we're going to go with is we're going to go the distance through the air. So your average carry was longer than you thought. The first one was a bit stiff, but the next three shots you hit all had a nice bit of draw spin. You know that last shot? It's just worth a bit of a replay, OK? okay. I saw it. I don't know if you did. OK, the ball started at 1 o'clock, a lovely neutral draw back to the line, longest of the four shots was also the most accurate. Okay. Cool. So, we're going to increase Nick's power, and we're just going to take the shoulder coil, because that is half the, half the job done. This is an old-fashioned carpet beater, when you knock dust out of a carpet on a washing line. And Alex Hay gave me this drill. We call it the carpet beating drill, because I would turn the Y shape to here and beat the carpet. Not the pupil beating drill, no? Not a pupil. Well, if you don't do it properly, it might be, Nick. So <laughs> here we go. So you got it, the club in your arms and shoulders are the Y shape, and you load the Y shape as fully as you can, but you'll only be able to get the shoulder high. And then from here, you're hitting the ball as strongly as you possibly can. OK, so in you go, Nick. And what I'm going to do is just change the name and the colour of the dots, and let's see what sort of distance you produce just with the half shot here. Calling it a five iron, it's not a five iron, I'm just going to call it that. Good. Okay, 
So you clear Nick, you're going to load the Y shape strongly. Sort of half back swing uh, with the yes. shoulders. Yes, yeah. and, but you're going to hit the board as hard as you can with the Y shape. Okay. okay. Very good. Okay. Now as it happens, your arms went before the shoulder and that's your classic rolling pull. Many of you at home will get that shot, nicely hit, starts at 11 o'clock and pulls to the left. And that's when Nick went with his arms only. He didn't get the shoulder igniting the takeaway. So that's the key, key to power. The, the shoulders coiling in the first inch is the key thing. So Nick, both shoulders, arms and club, load the Y shape and through. Well done. That's better? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Now, if I just turn the camera, if I just put my hand about a foot away from my thigh, I can slap my thigh gently, medium, a bit harder, or as hard as I can. So that's what I'm asking it to do. I'm asking him to load deliberately, but with this restricted backswing to drive the club with everything he's got, his hands, his arms, his core, his legs, everything is going to beat the dust out of the carpet. So come on, Nick, let's see you uh, really get aggressive. Keep the swing limited through the Y shape, but you hit the ball as far as you can for me. Off you go. So we're into, at a very early stage, creating power straight away. And we're understanding that the shoulders are what do it. OK, so in you go. Very good, Nick. I still feel like I've got some extra power there to, yeah. to go at. Still leaving a little bit. So Nick's improved his power source in the shoulder turn. What he's also learned as a byproduct is how to a low shot under the wind, because this is how you do it. You just take the wrist out of the swing and you hit the ball on a flat trajectory. So Nick, what we're going to do now, we're going to develop that particular part of your body. We're going to give you a drill using the explainer to see if we can get more life into the shoulders, more speed to the hands. And I think I'll be able to show you more distance. Okay, sounds good. Good. Okay, Nick. So we've got you hitting some of the carpet beating shots already with the shoulders and the arms and the roller. We're now going to take the carpet beating drill into explainer. So Nick's got the long power roller here. He's going to go down the grip to simulate the six arm type swing. So in you go, Nick. Set yourself up there. Yeah, we'll put the line on the roller there. Take your grip. Good. So I'm just going to give you this feeling. So Nick's shoulders, arms and roller, this is the essence of the carpet beating drill. He's going to let the shoulders turn, the Y shape the back here, shoulder high. And as we said earlier, to hit the carpet as hard as you can, Nick, on the way through. Okay. okay? There's no wrist hinge in this to speak of, and uh -huh. there's a tad of forearm. But basically, it's the Y shape back and the Y shape through. You might have a slightly longer through swing because of the acceleration, uh -huh. but basically the Y shape back and the Y shape through is what we're after. So. In you go. Good. So the focus forward, load fully, wide, and go. Very good. Just keep the back thing a bit shorter for me, Nick. Load. Good. So once the shoulders have turned going back and created the power, use the hands, arms, and roller as quickly as you can. Load. Good. And again, slow back. Very deliberate. And then kill. That's it. That's what we're talking about. So this is the gym session, Nick. This will this will get you tired. It's a workout oh, already. I can it's, feel it. It's a workout. Okay, load the Y shape. That's it. Now again, we're dealing with that thing. You wouldn't ever be as committed through the ball on the golf course no. with your arms, would you? No. All right. Now it's not reckless. It might feel that to you. It's just committed. Yeah. All right. In you go. Load the Y shape steadily, and go. Very good. Now when you do this drill with no wrist hinge, it ignites the core muscles. I can feel it already. You feel it, can yeah. you? Right. So you see that when we take the wrist hinge out of the golf swing, we ignite the core and the leg action. And if you've got poor leg action, poor weight shift, this drill will do you some benefit as well as giving you more distance. A couple more then, Nick. Loading slowly and go. Yeah. Well, I've been at the fairground ringing the bell to win a, yeah. a goldfish. Come on now. That's great. OK. So that's only a few minutes. That's all it takes. We're now going to give Nicky six arm back and see if the carpet and beating drill has seen any change on the screen. I'm sure it will. All right, Nick, we've just moved the explainer to one side, and Nick's now going to do the carpet beating drill with the six iron, and uh, don't have a practice swing or anything. What tends to happen, Nick, is the club will feel very light, 
and people often miss the first two shots or three shots, but then there'll be a batch of four or five shots that really go for it. Okay. But again, it's a mental as well as a physical change for you. I'm asking you to load deliberately, but to hit the thing as far as you can with that restricted backswing. Okay, in you go. And don't worry if the first couple are poor. That's quite accept that's quite understood because the club feels so light. Just do your best to load and go through as strongly as you dare. Very good. Now, I know, Nick, that that's not as fast as you can go. I know there's more to come, all right? That means the backswing's deliberate. You mustn't rush the backswing, but you cannot be too quick with the release. Okay, here we go. Load. Very good. Okay. okay so let the, let the screen clear, Nick. Okay. All right. Now, the Y shape fully, load it and fire. Hard as you dare. Very good. All right. Well done. Let's turn those shoulders another couple of inches. I want another 15 miles an hour out of you in the clubhead speed, Nick. Go for it now. Load and fire. Well done. Okay. Now, if we're going to win that goldfish, this golf ball's got to fly a lot further. Okay. Okay, here we go. That was your first poor strike. The swing was yeah. good, but you mistimed the shot. A little bit heavy. And a bit heavy, but it didn't damage you greatly. It was as accurate as anything else that you've hit. Very good. Okay, so we're starting to see a change now in the distance. Amazingly, Nick, again, as you work on this and you do drills and when you're at the driving range, you hit these half shots, you just become more proficient at yeah. doing it, okay? All right, come on now, let's really button it, load the Y shape and hit it as hard as you can. Very good. Okay, so just hit one more. Is it just turning through the body, not, not releasing the wrists at the moment? No, it's all about hand action. So once you load the Y shape, your hands hit the ball as hard hands as you can. Right, okay. Hands, arms and club. Load. Ah, you see that? Yeah. Okay, so we just learned something there. Nick was doing perfectly for me, giving me the Y shape, but his hands were passive. We just understood that from his feedback. So we're going to put the hand action back in there. A couple more then, Nick. So you're loading the shoulders going back to the maximum, but then, as I said, you cannot be too quick with the hands. Hit the ball as far as you can. Very good. Can you hear that? Yeah, I can hear the sound was different, wasn't it? Yeah. Good. So it took us a couple more shots than I thought it would, Nick, but we got you there in the end. I'm a slow learner. All right. Now I think you've done well because this is new to you. So if we look on the screen and sign our camera, and if you swing left to the dispersion on the left here, so the yellow circle was where you'd hit some six irons to warm up. And then the next circle, the red circle, was your first attempt. And then the blue circle, including the last two strong ones that you hit, you can see you've got a slightly wide dispersion, but it's not unruly. And again, if we look at the spread from an aerial view, we can see that the stronger shots are, again, the most accurate. So in the yellow group and in the red group, the strong shots are your most accurate. OK, Nick? You've got a good, good feel for that? And what we just discovered, you're loading the shoulders going back, but the hands are beating the carpet as quick as they are going through. So that's half the swing and half the power source. We're now going to add in the next quarter of the power source and that comes from the forearms. That will be the next lesson.